Tonight's number, Donald Trump's health care bill. You may have heard about it. Um, I think for this segment, because Richard has been away, I want to spend some time unpacking the events leading up to the passage in the House of Representatives of Trump's second attempt at repealing and replacing Obamacare. So the number for our News by the Numbers segment is nearly half of Americans oppose this new bill. Okay, so although it narrowly passed through the House on May 4th last week, 44% of Americans are opposed to the legislation. Now, meanwhile, just 31% of the American public is approving of this legislation. Now, my thing is, if this bill passed in its current form, and you let people have another two, three, four years down the road with this law, I think this disapproval number is gonna go way up. So right now at 44% of Americans oppose it? Yeah. Well, that's because they haven't experienced it yet. Exactly, I mean, that's the thing. Like this law does not discriminate whether you're a Democrat or Republican. No. If you get screwed over by this, it doesn't matter what party no, and I think, right. and we, if you check out our, my Twitter page, there is a segment that I actually do about this particular bill um, with somebody from the Blaze, I can't remember his name. Um, Unnamed Blaze. But we had a conversation about something, one of the main features of this bill that is really bad. So the Affordable Care Act, um, or Obamacare, was based off of this principle of income. So the, it was all based on income. The, like the foundation of it was, we are going to make sure that everybody has ac access to affordable health care and we will adjust, we will use subsidies and Medicaid expansion to adjust based on income. So we level, we level the playing field. Do this right here so you people down here and you bring them up here and you level the playing field. What this bill does, it's, it's all the entire, the foundation of it is based around age. Right. And what that means is if you're a young, healthy person like me and Rich. Pay less money. We pay less. But our older, healthy counterparts. Un well, not healthy. No, even healthy. You are old older. People, period. Yeah, are also our parents who are both healthy. All four of our parents are healthy. Alive, healthy 50-year-olds. If, the, if they go to the marketplace, they will pay up to five times more than we would pay even if they're healthy. So a sick Richard, so if I was sick, God forbid, at 30, I would pay less right. than a healthy 57-year-old. That's problem number one. Problem number two is this pre-existing conditions piece, yeah, right? That's gonna be... So Republicans good. would argue that they fix pre-existing conditions by you know, creating these high-risk pools, and they're putting more money into these high-risk pools. But we have, there's no evidence, there's no demonstrative evidence that these high-risk pools actually work. The only place where we've seen a high-risk pool be put in place is in the state of Maine. Mm -hmm. And in that state of Maine where they put the high-risk pool in, what they found there was the state government put in X amount of dollars, and the high-risk pool actual cost Balloon that by almost a billion dollars. Right. I get a number. I'm not overstating the number, but a million dollars. So basically, they budgeted this amount, and that money it skyrocketed. So yes, Congress has put in 58 billion to help those with pre-existing conditions, but because they've also widened the net of what's considered a pre-existing condition, there's going to be way too many people in this high-risk pool, which is going to sap the money. Right, and then the next argument I can say was, oh, well, it's only if states opt out. Well, I ha and I said this on air, and I'll say this here on, the on my show, is that opting out will happen. Any state, just follow the tea leaves, y'all. Any state where the governor chose not to expand Medicaid, just expect that state to opt out. Yeah, you're right about that. So and that's Florida, Texas, um, Mississippi, Louisiana just getting, they're getting ready to expand. Virginia hasn't expanded Medicaid. South Carolina hasn't expanded Medicaid. I'm missing some states. Um, Alabama, Georgia, um, Nebraska, even though they got the Cornhusker kickback. Um, Wyoming, you just, Republican control states that don't have a liberal leaning outside of Arizona. Well, I think Arizona has a slight liberal lean. Yeah, Arizona's a little bit weird. So, but all those states, all those individuals, they have all decided not to expand Medicaid, so they'll probably be the first to say, oh, we're opting out, <laughs> right? So that's problem number three. Problem number four 
and there's mad problems with this thing, right? Problem number four is it guts Medicaid expansion for the states that did expand. So those people will lose health care. So Kentucky, Ohio, New Jersey, New York, Washington, D.C., Maryland, all those states that have expanded Medicaid and they're actually seeing uh, a decrease in an increase in preventative care, a decrease in, med in emergency room services, a decrease in the a decrease in the cost curve for health care. That's going to balloon because all those folks will go back onto what I like to call emergency room health care insurance, right. which is, means I get sick, I go to the emergency room, and I don't have preventative care. That's number three. Number four, and I'm going to shut up, and I want to hear Rich's take on this, is we learned this week that Aetna, one of the largest health care providers in the country, are pulling out of all the exchanges. And they're not pulling out of the exchanges for the argument Republicans want you to believe. Republicans say they're pulling out of the exchanges because Obamacare is collapsing. No. They're pulling out of the exchanges because of the uncertainty in the market. Right. So what, the, what Aetna's saying, because remember, let me say this, I say this over and over again. Health insurance companies really, while they do care about your health care, they re their, their number one responsibility is to bring in profit. They have a fiduciary responsibility to bring in profit for their shareholders. Right. So Aetna's saying, okay, this is, we're going to take on way too much risk if we put ourselves in an exchange that could get gutted, that could disappear. Because if that exchange disappears, and we have people in these policies, these policies are, we could, basically, we're paying out $1,000 when we could be paying out $500 because of the water, the bill's gonna be so watered down. Why would we put ourselves, why would we put ourselves on the hook for $1,000? I'm shutting up now. No nah, problems. You said five. Well, that was, five. That was five problems. So, touching back on the uh, pre-existing condition thing, um, I think one of the, the things that people loved about the Affordable Care Act or Obamacare was the, was the fact that uh, health insurance companies couldn't discriminate against patients who had pre-existing conditions. Now, one of the reasons that they were able to do that was by introducing more younger, healthier people into the marketplace, they were able to bring premiums yes. down and level the playing field. Now, obviously, the GOP bill wants to get rid of that completely, and they're saying, you know, if you don't want to have health insurance, you don't have to, and screw everyone else. Now, yes. meanwhile, Expanding the list of pre-existing conditions is going to be incredibly problematic. And until this is in practice, I don't think people are going to understand the real impact. When someone loses their job and they're going on the market and they try to find you know, a health insurance plan and they're like, oh my God, I cannot afford this. Because there is a universe coming soon to, to a town near you where you go and it's just not even an option. The price is so high that there is no way your family could afford it. Yeah. And these pre-existing conditions, I mean, you talk about the, the terrible pre-existing condition, you know, cancer, you know, HIV, something like that, whatever pre-existing conditions that you think on the far end of the spectrum, there are a lot of pre-existing conditions that are diseases that people live with on a daily basis that don't really cause problems in their life, like, you know, Crohn's disease is an example of one yeah, of those. And, and Republicans expanded pre-existing conditions in the bill. Right, to, which only makes it worse. Pregnancy, so C-section, even a, su <laughs> a sexual assault. It's a previous condition. There you go. Don't get so, raped. What does that tell? I mean, it, it's absolutely nonsensical. And, you know, you wish that you could just show everyone this is what's going to happen. How is this good for anyone? But, you know, unfortunately, uh, yeah, and, until the pain actually hits you, then people go to town hall meetings and they freak out. And they're like, why did you why did you pass this bill? And to be fair, and to be f fair. There are some Republican proposals, not in this bill, because they rushed, they jammed it through. Yeah, they just wanted that um, checkbox that said, we did it. But there are some Republican proposals that are actually not bad. Like, I have said for some time that some sort of tort reform could be, there's some appetite there for tort reform. I, I mean, buying across state lines, if you can set up, if you can guarantee enough providers in respective states, then maybe that. There are other solutions out there. Those just weren't considered. They rammed this thing through so quickly. They're like, whatever people will sign, we don't care. But they don't realize absolutely how bad it is. And I think one other thing that I want to bring up um, about this bill that makes it also very problematic is um, the piece around regarding what happens if you don't have health insurance. So if you don't keep continuous insurance, under the Affordable Care Act, you'd pay a fine to the government. And that government, that money would be used to go back in, in the exchange in the system. Right. In this system, if you don't keep, so they've gotten rid of the quote unquote mandate, but the moment that you get back on health care, you pay a 30% premium that goes directly to the insurance companies. Yeah. 
So they basically it take the penalizes money. Penalizes people who have no money. Yeah. So they penalize folks who don't have any money, and it's not like they're penalizing you to benefit the greater good of all people. <laughs> no, they're they're penalizing you companies. to help insurance companies. Yeah, that's a mess. All right, folks, we're coming up on the break. This is so screwed up. We'll keep talking about it.